Every year, our team receives a new engineering challenge from the FRC, where we have just six weeks to build a robot. If you imagine our build season as a timeline, last week was basically the Stone Age. We were playing with concepts and doing testing in various categories. This week, on the other hand, practically speedruns through the entire Bronze and Iron Ages all the way up to the Industrial Revolution. We take these robot ideas that have been tested and lightly prototyped and refine them as much as we can with our awesome friend CAD, or Computer Automated Design. It's a lot of, how can I improve the shooter, make it more accurate? How can we make our intake twice as fast? How can we take any prototype we've made and improve its charisma stat to maxima? I, I mean, improve its efficiency. Anyways, this week is super important for the rest of the season, as we are supposed to have a rough draft robot by the end of it. We need all the time we can get to accomplish this, so it would be really nice if we had a full, uninterrupted week to do this. This morning, the major Arctic blast bringing dangerously cold conditions to millions. We have wind chill warnings in place for the front range Some and records, the plains. And we are actually on track to break another record for coldest high temperature. Where we're running 10 to 25 degrees below zero. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. If we don't act fast, the speedrun we are hoping for is going to be more akin to a Minecraft Let's Play by a 12 year old. Hey guys, Christian here. We definitely don't want that, so let's get to work. The game piece this year is the note which is very pliable, which means it compresses easily or can squish a lot. So when you have a, a game piece that's very pliable like that, you want everything that touches it to be not very compliant, right? It, you want it to be very rigid. We, we did test with um, two inch screen compliant wheels, but found that the compression was just shredding the game piece. So we ended up taking a half inch hex axle and putting surgical tubing on it with the use of compressed air. It grips the game piece really well and that it's it's not compliant because it's, it's a metal axle. We ended up choosing a quad axle surgical tubing uh, intake. What that means is there's two sets of hex axles that one of them sucks the uh, note up off the ground and the other brings it horizontally into the robot. We got rid of the side axle shooter because as the game progresses the notes will get more beat up and compression on the top and bottom will be a lot more consistent than on the sides. So far a shooter is pretty accurate if we have a good feed into it but we're building a new prototype with a better feeding system so we'll be able to get a lot more accurate tests to be able to see how accurate it is. I mainly show the manipulator subteam in these videos, but so many other subteams work together to make our robots work. Electronics wires everything and is in charge of the testing setups. Programming gives the robot life, or at least that's what I'm told, I don't really know how it works. Mobility allows our robot to move and climb. SI puts all the robot puzzle pieces together, and there's one secret subteam, which we'll only talk about in week four. And that about wraps up the second week of our build season. Subscribe to see more and find out what that secret subteam will be in week four.